<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the PA Forum and PA Guide um, festive event tonight, where we have our gift wrapping expert, Neela Meacher. Now, I met Neela many, many years ago, um, and she's been in the industry for over 16 years, working to do some very fantastic gift wrapping for corporate clients um, for personal basis and she's also a designer as well so I'm sure we'll hear more from you Nina about your expertise and more importantly we're going to get to see it tonight so thank you ever so much for joining us really appreciate it. Great. Hi, um, Daniel, thank you so much for the invite and I'd like to say thank you to everybody. I'm sorry you can't see my face today because um, I've set this camera up because I have a lot of corporate demonstrations I'm doing for the next few weeks, so I don't touch my camera. Um, so thank you and welcome. And what I thought I'd do today is I'm going to show you how to wrap gifts that people sort of struggle with a little bit. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as, as clear and as simple as I possibly can, but I'm going to add some, you know, different kind of flair to the gift wrapping. Um, so what I'm going to start with, because we, we, we have up to about 40 minutes, um, if, if I go over a little bit, that's fine as well. I'm going to start off with just wrapping a, a box of Frere Rocher. Um, and the reason I chose this, this particular box was because sometimes people feel a little bit anxious and a bit nervous about the fact that it's, even though it's quite square, it's quite sharp on the edges. So I do a lot of training. So I have a lot of people come and train with me and we do a lot of online training as well. Um, and I get a lot of questions about the sharp edges, but with gift wrapping, the main thing about gift wrapping is the size of the cut of your paper. So let me just sort of demonstrate first. So normally what would happen is, let's say for example, what I did was I took my large roll and I just measured it to the side. So it only has to go up to, up to the side like so, not any higher. But as you can see on this side, it's slightly longer. So normally I would just cut that away. But I'm going to show you what you can do if one side is too longer. So the problem people have with gift wrapping is that they actually have too much paper on the side and that's what causes the bulk on the sides. Okay, so when I measured my paper, first of all, I wanted to make sure the sides were okay. And then I to make sure that I have so oh Neelam Neelam can, can everybody still hear me yeah yeah sorry you're, I think he says here that your bandwidth is is dropping out okay Did, were you were you okay hearing me throughout Daniel yeah it, it, it keeps breaking up a little bit sorry it just okay. says Neelam Meacher's network bandwidth is low okay um let me just make, let me just try and turn a couple of things off I think that's the thing nowadays, um, isn't it? Because we've got so much going on in our hi homes with phones and yeah. everything connected. Just, but I think you're back now, lovely. I think it's okay now. The yeah, band I've just turned a couple of things off, off Wi-Fi. Fantastic. Sorry to interrupt you, lovely. No, that's absolutely fine. Um, so okay, so... Um, okay, so let me have a look. So normally what I would do, when you're wrapping a present, you would wrap the present upside down. Okay, So any mistakes or any creases we have, we have them on the bottom. So what you'd normally do is you just take the paper across. And then you would bring the paper over the top like so. And then this is the excess paper. But with this excess paper, what I want to do is I want to just create little pleats um, so that we're not wasting that paper. So I want to wrap this particular present on top. And I'm going to be using double-sided tape. So the main thing for professional gift wrapping is double-sided tape. So what I want to do is we want to take our paper just over the top like so. And let me just keep the one side level and the other side's a little bit longer. So that's fine as well. Bring your paper over. And you can see I'm just holding my fingers just here and I'm just slowly bringing the paper over across the top like so. Okay. And then if you have too much paper, you can cut that paper away or what you can do, you can create what you call a little Japanese pleat. So what you would do is just take the paper from the end, make a little fold. And then I'm just going to fold it again. 
And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just take it over and then just bring the pleat back on itself. So I'm just lifting it up and I'm just bringing the pleat back on itself again. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to take some double sided tape. Now, if you're somebody who feels a little bit nervous about gift wrapping, what you can do is you can take just a little bit of cellar tape. Just some clear tape. I tend not to put any clear tape on a gift because I just think when people unwrap it, it doesn't look very nice. But if you're somebody just practicing and you're not sure, you could just take a bit of tape here and just tape that in place so that doesn't move, okay? So I've made those two pleats. And then what I did was I checked because sometimes people tend to, you can make a couple more pleats and it's amazing how much paper you're going to use. So I always give a little check, bring it back over. I'm just going to fold that pleat back on itself again. So that pleat would end up on the side of the box, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to put some double-sided tape on the back here. And I'm just going to hold like so. Now, the problem that a lot of people have when they're wrapping and they always find like, you know, when you, you put your gift on, there's always a bit of uh, an air pocket just on the side. To eliminate, what you want to do is you want to take your um, paper from the center here. So you have the same amount of pull on both sides and then just bring that across and just take that down, okay? So this side it's fine. I have, um, you know, there's not a lot of paper there, but then again, on this side, we have too much paper. So I kept that on purpose to show you what you can do if that happens. So when you're wrapping as well, what people tend to do, so if it's facing me, people tend to do Neela. Keep pushing in. I'm so sorry. And just bring that paper. Sorry, Neela, we keep dropping yep. again. Okay, I'm not quite sure why that's happening. I've... Yeah, um, I'm let me see. Because it's not, it's not coming up on mine. Yeah, it's. I don't know whether. I think it's come back again now. Yeah, apologies. It, it just keeps going in. What you do is it just delays a little bit. I'm so sorry, but I think we're that's back fine. Now. If it if it drops, just just tell me, and I can just stop again because I can hear you. Okay, fab. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I'm not quite sure why it's dropping. I've not had that problem before. No worries. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so we're taking the paper down. And what we're going to do here now is we want to create a nice crease. So it's the fold and the crease that gives that crisp finish. And then you want to make a really nice tight fold here. And the same on the other side. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to be wrapping this lifted upwards. So we're going to take our paper in. And this is the key to professional gift wrapping is taking that paper right in against the box. So if I did this one like this, just folded it anywhere, you'd have that gap there, okay? So it's nice and tight in. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a little fold just on the end. And then I'm just going to take my double-sided tape again. And what I'm doing is I'm ensuring that that area of the paper is flat and it's it's not sort of flapping. Because sometimes you, if you just put the tape, tape here, that area just flaps. And so that creates, uh, that doesn't create a nice clean finish. So I'm just going to take a couple of pieces on the ends first. And just one in the center here. Then again, we're just going to lift our paper and then just fold that into place. Okay. And then that's your finish on the edges as well. See, I had too much paper here. So normally what, what would happen is you would tend to sort of take your scissors and then just cut all the way around. But what you can do just to save time and cutting all that paper away, what you would do is just take your scissors just to the center here. And we're just going to cut just just a small arch. And 
and then again we're going to take this one down don't worry too much about the fact that this is longer than the other side because we can still create that fold so again we're just going to crease so this is important we need to ensure that we're creasing effectively here take that in deep into the box again and then this time i'm just going to fold that a little bit further in So sometimes when we're wrapping in front of an audience or if we're doing a corporate wrap or demonstration, sometimes I find if you've made a slight mistake and the paper's too long, it's it's easier to just, you know, you lift it up and you're cutting it around. This makes you look a little bit more professional. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do again here, just going to lift up. And then again, that's just folded there. Another thing that I like to do just here, so you can always put a little tag just in here, just a little pocket there, just to give that little lift. So that would just create a nice pleated gift wrap. The, another thing that you can do is, so for example, if you wanted to, you could actually create a, a belly band. It's called a belly band. So you could, you could create the pleats separately and you could just tie those pleats in. So rather than, um, cutting the paper longer and then pleating in the same colour, you could actually turn it over so you just have a, a plain band of red ribbon, um, paper there. So to finish that off, you don't need to do a lot to a gift like this. I'm just going to take some satin ribbon. Okay, so with gift wrapping, what normally happens, everybody tends to like, like to have their bow in the center. I'm just going to wait for my connection to come up again. Daniel, can you still hear me? Yeah, all good, lovely. Okay, um, everybody tends to put a bow in the center. So I'm going to show you how to, it looks quite elegant when you just have a nice simple bow, especially on a Japanese pleat gift wrap. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my ribbon from underneath. And I'm just going to, first of all, just tie that. If there are any questions, Daniel, you're welcome to um, sort of ask as I'm going through. That's absolutely fine. Will do, lovely. We're just having lots of comments saying the pleat looks really effective. Um, Essa loves the double-sided tape, uh, loves that tip. Um, is it a particular type of paper that you're using? It looks like it creases and holds much better than um any other any wrapping paper they've used before yeah so with wrapping paper when you tend to buy wrapping paper from a shop sometimes it can be too thin um and then other times you could buy a wrapping paper which is really thick and then that doesn't pleat so i normally go for what this obviously this is a big corporate roll wrapping paper that i'm using myself here but what you would do is um it's not really the paper it's actually making sure that you don't cut too much paper because then the paper falls really nicely against the gift and the size of the gift. Okay, so I'm just going to just take my ribbon. I'm just going to make, first of all, just a small knot like so. So in gift wrapping, you make your first knot, then you always make a second knot on top. What you never do is sort of wind it around because it distorts the shape. I'm going to show you how to make a really simple bow. Um, so what, what I can do is, because I don't want too much on here, you could just sort of take your ribbon and you can just keep tying it and just make, it look, make a load, uh, uh, a variety of little strips. But I'm just going to show you how to make a combo. So when you're measuring to create a bow, you have, if a bow looks too big, it takes away the elegance of the gift. However, um, with something like this, we don't need anything big. So it will be slightly smaller than what it would be on a box, but because we want, we don't want to take our eye away from the pleats here. So I know if I have a loop about this size, what's going to happen is still going to open up. Okay. So I'm just going to just make a little loop. I'm just going to take a small amount of tape. Now, this tape is only here while I create the bow, just because it, this is satin ribbon and um, I don't want it to fall apart. Now, the other thing is I don't, 
I very, very rarely, only for a sample sent to me, do I use wired ribbon. So all the ribbon I'm using here is non-wired. So you can still create a nice full bow without a wire. And then I'm just going to sort of loop. And when I'm looping, I'm counting. So normally for a small bow, I, I would loop about 10 times. Okay, starting from the tape, so that's one. Actually, I'm going to do it five times just to keep you a little bit smaller. So once you've made your loops, and again, when you are creating a bow and making the loops, it's the, depending on how many times you, you know, you practice will determine how many times you're going to uh, know exactly how many loops you're going to create, because sometimes it's, it's just about practice and having your own style when you're creating the loops and how thick you want it. So then I'm just going to finish on the same area as the tape. And again, I'm just going to take a small amount of tape here just to hold it in place. Now, what we're going to do here now is we're just going to place the tape under my thumb. I'm just going to cut the edges of the ribbon. So I'm using um, uh, a material scissors here. This is the only one that I will use on my ribbons. And for other gift wrapping wrapping, I just use any kind of scissors. You don't need anything expensive at all. I've probably had this for about 10 years. So I'm just going to take a small edge off, just on the corners here. Then I'm going to do the same. So remember, the tape is under your thumb here. A little bit of confetti there. And then once you've cut the edges, now for a ribbon of this size, we only need to cut a small piece out on the edge. And then I'm then just going to bring them together like a little dicky bow shape, like so. And you can tie this directly into here. But what I'm going to do going to take my ribbon and I'm just going to tie that in. So again, remember in gift wrapping, it's always a good idea just to do two knots. So nice and tight. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to gently just remove this tape. And I'm going to see how um, I'll remove the other one later on. So what you want to do now is we're going to unloop the, the, the loop from the inside. So we take the first loop from inside, this one here, and you're just going to pull it out. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking the loops out from underneath. I'm giving it a little twist just to create that lift for my bowl. So once you've done the one side, you turn that around. And then you just keep taking your loops out. Now, as I said right at the beginning, this isn't this is just a, a flat satin ribbon with no wire. But because of the way I've created the bow, it's created a nice lift. So I'm just going to do something. Just bear with me for a second. You're getting loads of lovely comments, Neelam. Says, I love that. It's a revelation. <laughs> oh, wow. I love the bow. It all looks so impressive. Wow, looks amazing. Very pretty. Thank you. Um, so then what I'm going to do, the finishing touch is the main thing in gift wrapping. I'm just going to take my scissors and just give it a nice sweep cut. And again, on the other side. Okay. And then if I just lift this up now, so you can see that this bow has a lift. It's not going anywhere. Um, and we've got the pleats here. And then we've got the bow on the side there. But you can see you don't need anything else on here because we've got a nice pleat on here and we've just got a nice simple bow. Um, so normally what people would do is they'd create a nice big bow on the center, but this is quite elegant and not, it's a very effective wrap and it's, it's a very popular wrap for fashion houses because, because of the pleating and it just looks different. So another thing then what you can do is, you you know, just because it's, the festive season coming up. <laughs> um, Esther, thank you. <laughs> um, 
that's 16 years of practice, Esther, believe me, because I was the worst gift wrapper in the world until I started doing it for a living, then I knew I had to improve myself. So just some baubles, what you can do is you can just sort of tie them in and just add them just to the boat to the bottom here, like so if you wanted to do that. Okay, so there's many different ways of um, adding uh, elegance to a gift wrap. So that's my first wrap. So that's a Japanese pleat wrap, nice, simple bow. And again, this is the best thing is it's a fact that if you understand the concept of the basic styling style, how you style a bow, the, uh, the basic way, and all you're doing then is pulling your loops out. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one out of the way. We and I'm going to just have a question, Nina. Somebody said, course. why is it called a Japanese pleat? Say it again, sorry. Do you know why it's called a Japanese pleat? It's for a show kid. They do a lot of um, pleating and they've always called a pleating on a gift wrap. That's where it came from. Uh, but they actually do it with um, material. Um, and it's something that um, I've just I've just heard for a long time that, that that's how they used to do their gift wrapping first. And it's for a cheeky. Um, and they always pleat their materials. And that's why when you do it on a paper, it, they class it as a Japanese pleat, basically. Fabulous. Thank you. Lovely. Great. OK, so I know one of these is the main problem. Um, so what I thought I'd do is obviously because I've got my camera overhead so you can see it, I'm going to sort of see how I can do this. OK, so with a bottle or any kind of awkward shape, the main thing is that we need to have a flexible material. So I do have some styles. If you go to my website, which is giftwrappingcourses.co.uk, on there I have free videos and different kinds of styles. You know, there's one where I actually wrap this bottle with a beautiful fan pleat on the side. But obviously with that, it's a little bit difficult today for me to do that. But I thought I'd give you a, um, something that you could go away and try yourself. So with an awkward shape, regardless of what it is, whether it's a tin or round tin or whether it's a, um, a bottle, you can get a foil wrap. So foil wrap you can buy from places like Hobbycraft. Um, you know, you can get them on Amazon as well. So this is just a, a foil wrap. It's double sided, nice bottle green on the end and a nice silver. So what you want to do is take your bottle just into the center here. Now, when you're doing something like this, you want to ensure that you have some string ready. Now, this is um, not going to be long enough. Let me just get another piece. bandwidth better now um daniel yeah much better thank you all good great so the other another tip is you can buy polyester ribbon so this is um just a plain polyester ribbon and when i first came into the industry this ribbon had a really bad reputation but it's because people only made a single bow with it so i've been able to develop a, a range of different bows and a lot of my brand clients when i do training and if you go to thornton's i've trained them how to use this ribbon so with this ribbon the beauty of this ribbon is you can just simply create the same kind of curling string as well all you're doing is just pulling it and then you have some really nice curling string so you don't have to spend on the uh, on matching curling string okay so we're going to take our bottle just into the middle here so what i'm doing first i'm going to measure and then i'm going to try and light down so you can have a better view as well what we want to do is we want to have enough foil just to cover the bottle and then we have so if that's a lid on the bottle we want to have roughly about eight inches five inches maybe and um, it's just that so we, we have a plume on top okay so what i might do i'll just i'll lie that down once i measured it I'll take my scissors and cut the excess foil away first. Bring that to the center again. Make sure it's nice and central. I'm just turning that around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my foil, take all four corners of my foil. And I think with this one, I think I might just try it, try it lining it down. Okay. 
So let's just assume, so I'm just going to make it 100 times harder for myself because it's going to roll. However, if you are if you have it, you're going to actually wrap it, so you're wrapping upwards like, like so, but just, for, just so that you can see it on camera. So there's my bottle. And that's how much extra paper I have. And then basically you're going to take all four corners, make sure that they're all matching up roughly. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to bring the foil towards the center. And you want it, you want to hold it by the neck. I've never actually wrapped it lying down, so this is the first. So what we're doing is just bring that foil all the way to the centre here, like so. Now I'm going to stand it up. So this is how you would actually do it. We bring all the feet into the middle here, like so. Okay. So that's how your bottle would be. So then you're going to take your string. I'm going to make mine slightly thicker. I have cut a little bit too much foil on the top, but I'll, I'll just use that to uh, make a little flower for another gift. So you don't have to waste that. I'm just going to take my string. I'm just going to give my string just a little twist here. And then when you're wrapping, you take the string from behind, slide the bottle down. Again, just make sure you're not. And then what I'm going to do now is I just want to take my foil. So again, if we're doing this, if it's lying down. So we're just going to take the foil and we're just going to take our scissors and we're just going to cut at a slight angle away from your hand. And then the professional aspect of the gift is what normally happens when you see a basket that's been wrapped by somebody and it's, it's just left um, sort of dropping. That's what takes away the professional look. So what you would always do, I call this peak and repeat, this sort of pull. And then just slowly work your way all the way around. Just turn that around. So normally I would stand this up and leave it for the demonstration, I'm just laying it down. So the key here is to work all the way around, not missing any, and that gives that nice pull and tug just the bottle and the bowl. So you can see that the pleats fall into place themselves now. You haven't had to put any pleats in. You can see how nicely they fall into place as well. Okay. So what we can do here now is, we, again, we can just make a nice little bow and we can just add the bow to that. So I'm going to take, now, if you're going to make a bow which has um, polyester ribbon, then you just stick with that one ribbon. What you don't want to do is mix uh, a material ribbon with, uh, with a polyester ribbon. You want to try and keep them separate. I'm going to trim that out. And then I'm going to just tie. Again, two knots. I think I might just add the baubles to this one here. So the string is a little bit long on them. So you can just sort of tie them gently. Not, don't make the knots too tight in case you want to undo them again. So what we do for about six or seven years, maybe eight years now, I've been demonstrating gift wrapping on the craft channels on Sky TV. Um, so in, in those on those channels, we, we don't get to um, do a practice run. We have to record live. So 
you know, I'm, I'm used to if I make a mistake, is you just have to take your time and just redo it again. Okay. So I'm just going to take my two baubles here. Just add those in. Just move them to the side to touch. And then I'm just going to show you how you can make a really simple bow. So let's say, for example, you only had that much ribbon left. Um, what I'll do, Daniel, as well, after later on tomorrow, I'll take photographs of what, what I wrapped today so you can, you know, so the audience can get a, a clearer look of how it looks. Because obviously it's a little bit dark here today for some reason. Um, a nice simple bow. What we're going to do here, you're going to take your ribbon. And then we're just going to take the ribbon across like so. So it's a nice collar shape. Okay, like this. And then we're just going to take the back end here and you're just going to level it out with the front here. Just match that up. And all we're doing here now is we're just pinching together. Okay. Take some string, just to make sure it's not too long. Again, take the string from behind, between your middle finger and forefinger, make your knot. So in regards to my courses and my demonstrations, I do gift wrapping. Um, we do paper flower court demonstrations, wreaths. And we, primarily I started off as just mainly gift wrapping for about 10 years. Then I slowly brought other products in simply because I was able to manipulate paper further and further. Um, so we do a lot of online, at the moment, obviously this year, we're just doing online corporate masterclasses rather than going out and doing them. So that's a simple bow. So again, remember finishing touch is important. So I'm just going to cut to a little fishtail shape. So you want to make your fold like so. And then you just want to take the scissors and cut towards the fold. That gives you a nice clean finish. Okay. We're going to do the same on the other side. I'm just going to again just cut this string out. I just use that string just to tie it together. So when I bring my bottle back in, I'm just going to add that bow like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the loop slightly. And another way to give it a better shape is just to grab both tails and the loops. Just give them a little tug, not too hard because the ribbon can tear. And then you have a nice shape there then. I'm going to take my double-sided tape. I think I saw a question. Oh, so people are just, um, we're talking about all the, you've got everyone talking about additional things they can put yeah. as part of the wrapping. So we've had key rings, which has been a lovely idea. Yeah. An additional part of a present. Absolutely. Um, even, I think Sam's saying here, battery powered fairy lights. <laughs> oh yeah, you can, anything. And, yeah. and the, the beauty of gift wrapping is, it, it, the wrapping with paper, whatever you add on, it's, it's, that's what adds the style. So again, remember the final finishing touches as well. And then I'm going to bring that down. And you could, I'll tell you what's really nice as well. Orange, you know, if you have some oranges that are sort of just left and they're still, they're still hard, but they're not eatable. What you can do is just cut them into slices, let them dry out, put them in the oven, let them dry out. And then you can just tie them in if you want something really rustic and really, um, uh, how can I say? recyclable so what we're going to do now is i'm just going to take that and that's how you wrap your bottle okay. that's fantastic nina i've just put in the chat i'm a kind of bottle bag type of guy so not because every time you wrap a bottle it's not i you, i can never do it but i think that looks fantastic congratulations yeah. that looks amazing i can't believe how long it would have taken you for you to learn to do that yeah. So, you know, with, with bottles, I'm taking that off just to show you how much cleaner finish to it. Um, with a bottle or any awkward shape, normally what happens, people will put the, 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 the bottle on top of the paper or the, the material. And then what they tend to do is they just rough it off on the sides. Everybody does this. And um, so they put it on, just lift it up. So what you want to do is you want to pleat it. And that's what creates this natural pleat. OK, so that's the bottle that. And what I thought I'd do, um, 
I want to show you, I mean, it's, it is going to be a little bit, um, because I've got a tight space here, um, but I thought I'd show you, what I'd show you next is putting together a little hamper. Um, so let me just bring something in while I'm just preparing that hamper to show you a couple of things that, you know. So this is what I designed as well. I designed templates for paper flowers. And so you can imagine now, so this is just a little wreath that I made. And um, what we do is I create the flowers and I take, draw the templates on, on my software program and then we make flowers and we do flower, flower backdrops as well. So if, for example, you could just take one of these flowers and you could actually put it on the bottle. Um, so I've got a little bit here that I did for a demonstration recently. So this is a, um, for a brand that I did. And um, so you could just sort of, if you imagine just having that flower just on top of here. So there's many different things you can use on top of a gift. Another demonstration that I did the other day for a brand. So they had a magazine. Um, so what I did was again, the Japanese print and then just made it, created some flowers from the magazine. So this is all, you know, eco wrap. And then there's a tear here. So what I had to do was take two pieces of paper, two sheets of the, from the magazine, and then just wrap it like so. So, you know, you can do a lot of different things. If you haven't got wrapping paper, you don't need it. You know, you can have use anything. Um, and that was really popular as well. Um, and again, you know, when you're talking about paper again, so this is a little bokeh that I designed. So it looks real, but it's just, again, paper flower put together. So if you imagine, again, just taking one of those flowers and you could just put that on there. So there's many different things that we do um, now that we did just be wrapping for a long, long time. So I'm going to try this hamper. Is that okay for me to do, Daniel? Does everybody want me to try that? Because obviously I have limited space, but I think it might just give you an idea on how you can put hampers together. So if you would like me to do that, I can do that. Yeah, I yeah. think I think a lot of people are thinking about hampers for Christmas. So I think it'd be yeah. really helpful, Neil. And thank you. Okay, no problem. Right, let me just get my products together then. So I'm just trying to think. How am I going to do this? I think just to give everyone a, a little, so Neelam was actually going to be booked to do, we, the PA guys in the PA forum were ho hosting a festive showcase together in June at the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. And Neelam was going to be live doing a live, this demonstration for us in person. But the fact that you've been able to adapt online, Neelam, considering <laughs> how the detail that you're going into is, is really exemplary. So thank you. Yeah. So um, my, Past career, I was a, uh, a lecturer of, of, with deaf students, so naturally, I I'm a teacher naturally. However, um, obviously, I wanted to when I stopped working as a lecturer, I wanted to continue doing some teaching when I started the academy. Hence, why I started to do lessons. Um, and what I found was, um, you don't need a lot of product. You, I'm I'm quite frugal like that. You can use material. Uh, yes, Sam, you can. You can use material as well. That's a really good idea. Um, so what I always want to try and do is keep it as simple as I can, because the, the more simple you keep it, the easier the product is to wrap. The, as soon as you start adding too many different things to it, it's, it, you do start to struggle a little bit. So what I have here, so this came as a, as a gift, um, and I'm actually wrapping it for somebody, so I might as well do it in my demonstration. And I'm just using some cellophane here, just a nice little print. I'm, not, I'm hoping I've got enough, but if I haven't, I'll give it a go. If not, then I'll have to find something else. But... Okay, so I'm just going to make some space for myself first. So first things first. When people put a hamper together, they they you sort of get the shred. Let me just show you what I mean by shred. Basically, what they'll do, they'll fill the hamper with shred. So imagine how much shred you have to use in a, in a hamper as deep as this box. OK, so that's quite a lot of waste. So what I tend to do is I always have brown paper and I always keep paper when I have a delivery. So we have a lot of deliveries. Um, so what I try and do is just keep the paper. So this is a nice sturdy paper as well. And I'm just going to gently place it in. So now, if you want to use a shred, you only need shred on top, okay? Straight away, you save on a ton of shred, basically. So I'm just gonna take some more here. I love the demonstrations. I will do them every day, all day long, 24 seven. It's just the tidying up I don't like doing afterwards. <laughs> okay, so you can do it like this, so where you have your shred, 
Um, so you, you, we don't have to have a lot of shred. Now, the other thing is another way to, first of all, to make your hamper sturdy, just place it in the lid. So, you know, when somebody receives that, they're going to be able to use that again and place the lid on top if they want to. Or, you just take that apart again. What you can do, you can actually take your lid and just place your lid inside at a slight angle. So I'm going to face it like this. So this is how your lid would be. Okay, so that's the front of the hamper. That's where the eye will go. And that's the lid is like a base. It's like a backdrop to the hamper. And one of the reasons I like to do that is because it takes a gift that might not cost a lot of money and it makes it look, you know, it creates a, a bigger impact because it's going to look a lot bigger as well. So I'm starting to sort of cut that in without distorting the box. Um, I'm actually going to take this shred out because I wasn't going to put the shred in, but I just wanted to show you. I was going to just put some tissue paper in. With tissue paper, all you want to do is sort of cut it in gently into the edges, just so that you're hiding the brown paper underneath. A box lid with paper in. Okay, so another thing you want to always do when you have um, products to wrap, you want to lay the products in front of you and you want to sort of organize them into shape and size. So mainly size. So I know these two are the tallest and we have these that are sort of a similar size, a little bit shorter and then we've got this. And then with something like this, you don't actually have to add that in. You can just let it hang over the top or you can actually, that could be the bow. So when we wrap it in the cellophane, just tie that to the, um, the outside of the gift. So what I want to do is I want to take my two main big products and I'm just going to place them. Okay, let me just try something here now. So I'm just going to place them like so. Pull them in a little bit so they're a little bit secure. And then just take the remainder of your products and then just start arranging them. When it's all wrapped, I'll be able to sort of lift it up and show you. Okay, so you can see that I'm trying to keep everything symmetrical. Maybe just add that just here. So I'll just have a little play around with it. Okay, so that's 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 your hamper. So you can see that you have the two longer um, products on the edges here. You can bring them out a little bit, um, and then you can just sort of just then adjust it as you, as you want. And then if you want to, just give it that little bit of a rustic just to make it look fuller, then what you would do is just add just a small amount. So this just makes the hamper look a little bit, uh, slightly more fuller, just with the shred in there as well. Okay, so now you can see I only use a handful of shred, but it's still giving me the same impact. Okay, um, and then let's say, for example, if we were going to add this in, we could just sort of add that in somewhere. And again, just makes it look fuller as well. Okay. Have a little play around with that again. Okay. So the key here is you don't want everything just to be falling everywhere. You want to you want everything to be sort of standing so that you can see it as well. Okay. So I'm going to now take a contrast ribbon. So the reason I'm taking this one is that I, I quite like the, this color within the box and it'll just give it a little um, contrast as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gently going to move that to the side. I'm just going to open my cellophane. So I've not actually, in my demonstration so far, I've, I think we've done about eight so far. I haven't done a hamper and I haven't done a bottle. so. This is sort of just piling a little bit, I guess, today, but I think it's working quite well. So we're going to bring our hamper on top of the cellophane. And we're just going to now measuring the cellophane. That's the top. Any questions, Daniel? 
No, Neelam, I think everyone's saying that the, the lid is has blown their mind, so it looks really <laughs> as a backdrop. It's all about um, adding value to the product. Okay, I think, so I think for me, this this is it's the effort that you you know you're going to to do it. I think when you're giving somebody a gift, and there's a lot of thought yeah. and behind it. Absolutely, definitely. Um, it just shows the recipient how much you know what you've gone through. We used to have when we used to do shopping since when I first started out. We used to have an elderly gentleman. He must have been in in his eighties. Used to come to us every year, just with one gift, quite an expensive gift every year. Um, and honestly, he used to wait. Um, for a lift after he used to um, finish and he used to have his gift like this he'd, he'd just wait there like this until the lift came he wouldn't put it in a bag um, because he, he understood the concept of what he'd you know what he was paying for so we're going to now take our cellophane so remember the way I did the bottle this is a similar technique So what we're going to do now is just, again, take the four corners. Now this one I can't lie down. But I, like I was saying, Dan, I do, I have online courses. I'll also have a DVD as well. And um, so what I'll do, I'll send you a link to that as well. So you can have a look and I have a hamper basket in there as well. Um, on my website, I have some free videos and there's a Christmas hamper on there as well. They, so the camera's facing, so you can see that. So again, I've taken all four points and all I'm going to do now, I've taken a piece of the ribbon. Remember, always have your ribbon ready. And I'm just going to take my hand on top. Okay, so this is, a, this is a, the key, this is the tip. Normally when people wrap, they sort of just can bring this all in like this. Okay, this is what they do. And then they, then they tie up here, so everything drops. So everything on the front is dropping. So the key is always find your highest point Always find your highest point, which is just here. Let me just get that button shot, sorry. So if this is a bottle inside the hamper, so let's say, for example, we didn't have a lid, one of these would be the highest point. You always need to rest the cellophane on the highest point. And I'm just going to, again, just take the four corners and just pleat in towards the center. Keep an eye on the sides here, just to make sure we have enough cellophane just to take the back. Swap hands. And again, just take that side. Take the ribbon from behind again. Remember, always take two knots. Nice tight knot on top. I'm just going to again work all the way around. This is the key. Just take a nice finish. And again, I'll show you how it looks when I finish the wrap on the top. Make sure you're taking your fingers all the way. What we want to do on the sides here, I'm going to, I'm going to risk it. Let's try and see if I can do it lying, it, lying it down. So just you can see what I'm doing on the side. So on the side here, you want to take the corner and you just want to pleat that back gently, like so. And I normally just take it off the edge of the table. Now again, the tip here is to place your sellotape on the cellophane first, like so, and then drag that cellophane and that tape to the back. Okay, So you can see that will give you a nice clean finish. Any extra cellophane, not too much tape, a little bit of tape, and then just on the bottom here, place your tape on first, and then just drag that underneath and that gives you a nice clean finish. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Just fold. Obviously, this year I had to cancel a lot of my um, live classes. Uh, I hold my classes in Wolverhampton. 
Um, but I have been doing online classes now since probably 2012. So it's not new to me. Um, it's just that um, obviously normally the live demonstrations used to be in person. But I've quite enjoyed actually doing it at home or in the studio after 16 years of traveling every sort of November, December. So it hasn't been too bad. So if, okay. if, somebody, if somebody wanted to record, like, do you do a, a recorded, what, like a recorded half an hour or 45 minutes like you've done today, Nina, yeah. do you already have one of those recorded or are they always live? No, I have online courses as well. Okay. Um, they're pre-recorded. Um, so all you, I, I, and again, I don't know if you mentioned, I have my DVD as well. Um, so you can get the DVD version online. So you don't have to buy the DVD. You can just access all the videos online. So if there's a particular thing that you wanted me to demonstrate and you wanted a recording bespoke for yourself, then obviously then I could I could do that. And then it would be online. All you'd have to do then is access it with a mem uh, password and username. So what I'm doing again, I'm just keeping the peak. And then I'm just going to take my ribbon. And I'm not going to add too much on the top here. I'm just going to add another piece of ribbon on top of here. Let me just tie that first and I can bring that down and show you. And then I'm just going to, again, just create a small little fishtail cut. Finishing the gift on the end, the ends is, is really important. Okay, so if I now bring this hamper, if I lie this hamper down, you can see how that hamper looks. And so from a box that was just this size with all the products inside, you can see how much bigger just by having the backdrop with the box. And also, you know, I think what would look nice here is a nice orange ribbon as well, just to complement everything that's in there. So that's your hand pull up. So let me just bring them all back into shot again for you. I did have my iPad on as well, Daniel, so we could have a view from this end as well. But unfortunately, when I'm ready, when I log in, it only allows this view for my camera for some reason, hence why it's all flat today. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, this is this is how you would um, first of all create a knife, just a clean, simple Japanese pleat. Um, what I've done in the past as well is if I have, if I have any pieces of leftover paper, like for example something like this, but let's just say it's a little bit wider. You know, all you would do is just create some folds on the edges. So it just finishes your office nice and neat. And then you can just add these things in as well. Um, so you could just add that in. So if I were to add something like this in, again, it would just give you a different look. So it's all about adding layers onto the, uh, the lift gift. So with your bottle wrap, again, awkward shapes. Foil wrap's good. Um, if you have um, material, again, I've got a video which is online uh, showing you how to wrap a bottle in material. You can wrap in paper. But what's nice about this is, it covers your bottle, but if you wanted to clear wrap with a bottle, if you had something really expensive and you didn't want to hide it, you could just use the clear cellophane. Um, and then obviously your hamper. Hampers are very popular because they can be very inexpensive to make. Um, however, you know, when you give a hamper to somebody that's presented professionally, it actually adds a lot of value. Um, so those are the three gift, wrap, gift wraps that I thought I'd, I'd demonstrate to you today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if there's any questions, you know, I've got a few minutes to answer any questions. And again, um, if there's anything that you're looking for in particular, you know, Daniel has all my details. Which you can always ask Daniel to get in touch with me or you can go to my own website, which is giftwrappingcourses.co.uk. That's fantastic. Can you just turn the bottle the other way around, Neelam? Yeah. That's it, just so we can see. Perfect. That looks fantastic. Let me just Thank try you so much. Um, would you, if, or what I'll do, Neelam, is I'll send out um, an email afterwards and just copy you in so people have got your details. Yeah. Um, and um, then we can, well, we'll share this recording with everybody as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then obviously um, they can have a look at your website for some of the other recordings that you've got as well. Is that okay? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, what I'll do, I'll just, is it okay for me to put my website in here? Yeah, of course. Yeah, please pop it into the chat. Has anyone got any questions for Neelam before she goes today? Um, just lots of thank yous. Um, thank you. Are there methods of wrapping without using tape? People are just trying to be a bit more eco-friendly. Yeah. Um, yes, there is. I mean, for example, 
I didn't use any tape on the bottle. So if you didn't want to use tape on the paper, what you would do is you could just um, sort of fold the, fold the paper so it's higher. It is very difficult to wrap without tape. It's not easy, but there is a fold. There's a way that you can fold a paper. Um, and what you do is you tuck the folds in. Obviously, I haven't demonstrated that here today, but you can. You don't have to use tape. Um, but also, if you are using tape, you only need, people tend to use a lot of tape. Honestly, that's all you need. That's all you need. Can you actually see that? Yeah. There. That's all you need. So people tend to use a lot of tape, but you don't need a lot of tape. Um, yes, yeah, so no, you don't, you can do it without tape. But obviously, it is all about the econ, uh, you know, being uh, eco friendly. Um, again, so this bow, if, if I, if someone took that bow off, if I just slide that bow off now, okay, if I slide that bow off, and then I can add that bow to this hamper, I could add this, you, do, you can you reuse the products here. Again, the way I made this bow, you can just actually pull that bow off, and then you can just add it to this hamper again. Um, so, you know, it's just trying to think about the way we're doing it, baubles can be reused again. Foil can be used over and over again. Obviously, with foil, um, there's you know it's a very sturdy material, but it can be used over and over again. And sometimes what we do is we just um, let me just see what we sometimes do is just take the foil and we create little flowers out of it, and then we just add them as well. So Fantastic, yeah, Leland, that's great. Yeah, everyone's really really positive comments in the chat. So thank, thank you. you so so much. I'm so grateful for you gifting your time to us this evening. So My thank pleasure. you from myself and Una, and um, thank you everybody else um, for joining us tonight. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll get the recording out to you as soon as possible. That's great. Thank you very thank much, you. and thank you so much for attending. You're welcome. Thank See you. Awesome. Okay. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye bye.